is in orange out here at Huff Hall. And the Spike Squad in full force, but immediately striking first will be Penn State off the service air. Fifteenth ranked Penn State with wins in the Big Ten over Rutgers and Northwestern. They've only dropped one set the last four matches as Burbage gets an early look and kept off the floor by the Nittany Lions. Brooke Moser goes behind her head to Burbage who has to adjust her timing. Second contact there for Barnes, the libero. Quick sets in the pancake, not there in time, and what a rally going to Penn State. Well, in the first rally, we see positive touches by Jess Merzik on the block. There was a point in that where Illinois thought that ball was down. Take a look at how they run that middle attack, even when Mac Pedraza is pushed close to that left pin. That's an efficient offense there, trying to pump that ball to the middle of the court. A calling card for Mac Pedraza, her ability to spread the ball around, whether that is location or to people and look at the block the number one team in blocking in the Big Ten Allie Holland there in on the play alongside Cameron Hanna well it is an impressive big looking block great formation here but what Illinois is trying to do early on is try to establish some other key hitters that can score for their team that's been a challenge for them with Raina Terry top five in the nation in attacks per set. They're looking for help wherever they can offensively. Here's Mosier again behind her head to Burbage. And up the middle terminating Kari Bohm with authority. Bohm taking advantage of the ball that is just dug over the net and those are middle or actually any front row player's dream. It's so fun to hit those overpass and get the kills. Just a clear layup for them to put away. Anyone would get excited for that. Long sets and that puts Hannah right into the block but she's still able to tool it away. Yeah and that is an amazing set by Mac Pedraza running clear across the court setting the long ball to the opposite pin. So an impressive first set there by Mac Pedraza. Amazing the accuracy yeah. she has. That is so much harder than she even makes it look. Yeah, she does make it look pretty easy. It's not an easy set to make for sure. Chased down by Mosier. She looks to Terry. And that is her first kill of this match. Arena Terry really trying to vary her shots. She loves that cross-court shot, and most opponents know where the ball's going. They have scouted her, but it comes at you with such force. It's really, really hard not to swing at those balls. So uh, we'll, we'll see how many cross-court shots Terry hits tonight. Second in the Big Ten and kills per set. A heavy arm and doing a lot of work for this team here. She just has to get it over, and that will be a point to Penn State is the Illini out of sorts right there. Well, this is what Jess Merzik does exceptionally well for Penn State. She takes a ball that she couldn't get a clean kill, but puts it in a spot that is going to be advantageous to her defensive team, the block, the defense. So down the line, Illinois could not handle it. The setter didn't get the hand, her hands on the ball. Coming right at us, Brooke Mosier to keep that alive. Terry not able to terminate. And then dumped right over by Holland. There's such a great presence at the net with last year's first team all Big Ten selection. You know, both teams uh, with their setter in the front row. So we're going to look for slide attackers out of the middle if the pass goes up to the middle. And that sails just long. Making the score six to three, still in favor of Penn State. Ellie Berry subbing out for Jessica Nunji, coming in on the front row. Terry making it difficult for the Nittany Lions, getting them out of system. There's that slide with Collins. She is so tough with that move. Well, Collins went up strong in the middle and took Allie Holland, Penn State's blocker, on the other side with her in the middle. So when that setter jump sets, Collin is going to run behind. You can see number 20 for Penn State getting caught with that front row setter uh, for Illinois Mosier, who is a great attacker at the net as well. And fantastic to see Collins be healthy. She was really just 
working through a knee injury last year, stuck it out for her team. So they tried to make the NCAA tournament, but she now is 100% and they are getting a lot out of her. That's served by Terry going into the net. She has struggled a bit, especially early on with airs this season at her 28th. Here's Collins again on the slide and working to perfection once more. What a set by Brooke Mosier. That ball was low. She gets her contact point lower than the ball, delivers a very impressive looking back set to Collins. And uh, Collins delivering with that swing and a kill. She's got a heavy arm, a lot of force in now because she's healthy, a lot more mobile too. Here's Markley. That is gonna sail far out of play on her first swing. Markley impressed me last year. She was not a starter on Penn State's team. She had a breakout match against Ohio State. I was there to witness it. And from that moment on, I thought that young lady is going to be a star. She's carrying a nice load offensively on that left pin for Penn State. She just burst on the scene in the Big Ten last year. Coach Schumacher Colley saying she's fearless, wants the ball no matter her age. That goes into the net and a point to the Illini. Illinois playing with a ton of energy and confidence. Mosier trying to move the ball around, setting the A, the quick to their middle attacker. So uh, nice movement there by Brooke Mosier, spreading it out. Mosier at the service line targeting the libero, Jillian Grimes. And there you see the heat unleashed from the transfer, Hannah. You know, it's just so amazing to see how these girls elevate. And she's hitting well over top of the block. Perfectly placed set there by Mac Pedraza allows Hannah to hit that deep line shot. A transfer from Clemson after three years, two times second team all ACC. Angelina Stark looking to Hannah again and getting underneath and handling the heat is Barnes. Nunji off hands. Another look for Merzak and she's going to sail too long. Or I was actually touched. It's a nine to seven. Actually, an attack air by Merzik. Just sailing too long. Pedraza setting up Merzik again, diving for it. Great play by Barnes. And the point to the Illini, so much energy on their side, looking for the first ranked win of the season. And Illinois' coaching staff is up off the bench, and they are delighted in what they're seeing right now. All out defense in the back court. Take a look at that sprawling save by Barnes in the back court. That point going to Penn State. And back at the service line, it will be Jillian Grimes. Someone who's earned her way as the starter in the jersey because of her passing. Serve, receive as well. Here is Terry unloading. Quick hitter and read by Burbage. Tight space for Hannah goes high hands. And Terry slices cross court for the kill. A Terry is impressing me a lot so far in this first set. She's hit a variety of shots, hard cross court. She hits roll shots to get Jess Merzik out of the offense, which means that ball is going to be set to the right pin for Penn State. And then when they get another opportunity, she finds an open hole in that front area of the court and left front. Look at that block. Kennedy Collins firing up her team. She is a force at the net. Not only is she a force, she's super quick, and she's stable and steady, and then when the setter releases the ball, she takes off. Take a look. She's kind of cheating a little bit more towards Merzik's side of the net because she knows it's probably going to go her way. What a blast from Merzik to respond. <laughs> 
Yeah, you rattled the cage there when you <laughs> stuff blocked her. She comes back and just hammers it. And that is one of the things you've got to be in this conference. If you're an outside hitter, you've got to have a short memory. You have to have a ton of confidence in yourself. You've got to want the ball, especially when you get blocked. She says that both her and Mac Pedraza have this connection, this unspoken language where she says we just read each other's minds. The ball is going to come back to me. And it looked like that's what happened on that previous play. Meanwhile, Illinois, with a whole lot of firepower, as we're tied up at 11. Yeah, Angelina starts playing that left-back position for Penn State. I don't think she realizes how sharp of an ang angle Raina Terry is swinging at the ball. So we'll see if she adjusts her starting position a little bit to defend that sharp cross-court shot. It's another service error for Penn State, or excuse me, for Illinois. And that is their fourth already, Audrey, and that is something that this team has struggled with this season is that balance of being aggressive, something that Chris Thomas's teams are known for a couple times over 200 aces in a season, but they've piled up those errors this year. Penn State strikes again. Well, I'm impressed with Illinois' serve-receive. The first ball contact is really good. It's good in front of the 10-foot line. You've got Mosier able to set a variety of, of, of hitters right now, but she's only got the two in the front row. There are no back row attackers right now for Illinois in the backcourt. They're all DSs. Markley getting underneath it is the freshman Barry. Markley getting another try from Pedraza. Terry into the net says, that's my bad. So let's go back and look at the back row for Illinois. They're all, like I said, DSs, so there's really no backcourt option to set when you're in a two-hitter rotation. Your setter's in the front row. Tough one. Timeout called by Illinois, trailing by three here at home. Back here at Huff Hall, the Spike Squad in full force. It is an orange out. Beginning of the school year, beautiful day in central Illinois and the perfect place to send. spend your Friday night. If you are a student, a great crowd on hand. They bring it every single time. Audrey, you talked about this is a difficult environment to play in. If you're Penn State trying to go to 3-0 and conference play. Harry looking cross court again, but that's going to sail just wide as she takes some heat off. Yeah, Terry getting an out of system set from the right back area of the court, trying to put that ball in that open spot in the sharp left front area of the court and just hits that one wide. That's Merzik at the service line. Good effort by Mosier. Drop down. And that will be a point to Penn State reading the ball with Illinois out of system. Penn State targeting the right back area of the court. Pan is the passer for Illinois, and we'll see if they, they serve the ball right back to her. She's made a, they just made an adjustment in their lineup right now. Yeah, they and took they her, have her in the, the yeah, deep, they took deep her corner. The, yeah. On the slide again, it's Collins chased down by Merzik. And a free ball for Illinois. Mosier goes again to the slide, and unloading is Collins. Well, Collins got some great sets coming her way, and what is incredible is that Mosier is putting her in a position where the block is split, and Collins, with her experience, can see that and just is ripping it right between the seam of Penn State's block. It seems like something that could really help Mosier, who is brand new to playing this position. She was an outside last year for this team, out of necessity, recruited as a setter back in her natural position. She's going to keep feeding Collins this time. It's sent back. Dungy, one more look and kept alive by the Nittany Lions. Pedraza gets it to drop with distance. Well, that's a great Big Ten extended rally. Great volleyball on both sides of the net. But Mac Pedraza, boy, she has really gained experience in that attack, moving it all over the court. This time sees that deep ball, a deep area to court number one and puts the ball there beautifully. 
that's not an attack that I've seen her do very often. So that just goes to show she's uh, she's learning different ways to score for her team. How do you even see that, Audrey? How do you even see that to make it, that play? You know, I think it's instinct. Um, I think she's got great vision. The older setters get, the more they can take their eye off the ball as the ball is coming to them, and they can see out of the corner of their eye where to put the ball. Timeout called by Illinois, falling behind by six. A six to one scoring run for Penn State makes the score 18 to 12 here in set number one at Huff Home. Penn State two and zero oh in Big Ten play. They've won four straight. It was really a loss to Louisville, three nothing, that sparked this run for them. And Coach Schumacher Cauley said that was a gut check for us. This team rededicated themselves in the gym, and she called them out, said we had to compete harder, we have to be grittier, and they've dropped one set since. Yeah, you know, losses like that, you come back and you have some uncomfortable conversations and telling everybody they got to step up and, and play their role, you know, but they certainly have. They've responded so well. Skying and firing is Terry, but she will pick up the air as that sails long. State opening up a seven point lead now with Holland at the service line. Mosier getting underneath that set and it goes for a kill. Well, not only does Mosier get underneath the set, she's not facing her target. It's off of her right shoulder that she's setting. She's on her knees and delivers a beautiful ball. I mean, she is just that raw athlete, that gifted kid that can do anything, considering she hasn't really set that for that many years. It's so impressive what she's able to do athletically out there. Barkley off the fingertips. And a chow step in that forced down by Trammell. And Baum sees her chance and takes advantage. Well, head coach Chris Thomas has got to be excited about the fight that his team is showing. They may be down, but boy, they are working hard every point. Just competing hard and staying with the ball. Coach Thomas felt like their win against Michigan State in five sets. They've been knocking at the door. And another example here of the fight, as you mentioned, of this team right there. And all their matches is Nunji. She's someone you want to get on fire because of the passion she brings. And a timeout call to buy Penn State with Illinois within four right now. Nanji going up strong. Again, smart hitter, experienced hitter. She's going to go high off the blocker's hand. She sees that middle blocker for Penn State is late and trying to exploit that seam. And those ricochet hits going off the block are so difficult to defend. So Nunji, big time swing for Illinois. Coach Thomas says that when Nunji gets a kill or makes a good play, you will know about it because her energy can help rally this team. So a great moment to maybe something that also played into that timeout by Penn State, knowing that impact that she can have. I mean, she didn't rejoin this team since earlier this month. She was not going to return. Studied abroad in South Africa, started playing beach, and it just really ignited that competitive desire within her. She comes back to the coaching staff, says, do you need someone? He said, absolutely, we need depth at our pins. And here she is. Yeah, it's a great story, you know. Is my career over? Heck no. Here I am in the gym competing hard against Penn State and swinging away having fun. And, you know, there's been some injuries on um, Illinois' team, so Nunji's presence was not only uh, a pleasant surprise for Coach Thomas, but very much needed as well. And one of those, uh, Taylor DeVore, an incoming freshman on the U19 Canadian team, unfortunately diagnosed with a rare autoimmune disease in the summer, out indefinitely, so they needed that extra help. But the good news is DeBoer, she's taking swings, she is serving, she's traveling with the team, and you wish her the best and a speedy comeback. Target Merzik 
with the serve, and Markley buries it in the back corner. So many good things about that play. First of all, Jess Merzik taking a really tough pass, putting it up, taking her out of the option in the back court as an offensive weapon. Ball goes out to Markley, and she knows, I've got to swing big, hard, over the block. What a great whip of an arm that young lady has. Back to Draza, back to serve. Mosier looking to Nunji, goes over the block, and a free ball for the Illini. Nunji once more, and underneath it, taking the heat is Merzek. Big dig by Barnes. And this red there at the net will be a point here late, a big one for Penn State. How about Merzik in the backcourt defending middle back so nicely? Gosh, that ball was coming at her so hard. She gets her platform under the ball, extends forward, saving that point for her team. That's what you want to see from your six rotation pins. Oh, yeah. Taking the heat. Running in is Raina Terry with so much grace and she finds the perfect spot. Illinois taking a marginal pass and able to convert it with a point because Raina Terry, everybody's back on their heels and then she sees three blockers coming in which opens up a lot of area of the court for her to either tip or roll shot in. So smart shot by Terry. You know she has so much range. Bozier cross court to Nunji, and that hits the floor. Another kill for Jessica Nunji, the fifth year. Nunji knows Mac Pedraza is in the right back area of the court, and she's digging deep. So, smart shot to go right over top of the block. Let's look at it here. Nice little soft shot there. And what I like about Nunji is she takes a perfect set and tips. It's not tip because I have no other option. She goes up strong and disguises it. Markley too long there, a point to the Illini staying in this first set. But back to Pedraza, that's something her coach has challenged her to improve her defense. She says, I want to get, see her get more digs and more blocks too. Yeah, and Mac Pedraza is very self-aware. She knows that, hey, I can set a great ball. I want to get better at blocking and backcourt defense. And so she wants to play at the next level after college. So she knows that that's something she needs to work on. My gosh, Hannah, check the floor. There was a lot of force there that she unloaded with. Well, let's go back to Mac Pedraza because I know this is a great hit, but the ball always seems to be in the same spot for her hitters, and that is just what outside hitters want. They want to be able to come in as soon as that ball is released and know that my hand-to-ball contact is going to be good because the ball's in the same spot every time. Terry setting up Burbage for the kill. How about that? What's really exceptional about Kayla Burbage is she's a right side attacker, but in that serve receive pattern, she feels extremely comfortable hitting from the left pin. And that's not the case with all right side attackers. Some just don't swing well from the left pin. Burbage getting a big time kill. She was even a middle blocker her first season of college volleyball at Mizzou. So she has played all over and they take advantage of her versatility. There is Hannah once more, just jaw dropping the speed she has. <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's uh, so impressive. I mean, again, the ball is put in the perfect spot for her, and then she is coming in with such confidence, and she's just going for it. Look at her hitting percentage right now. Four kills hitting 667. This coming off a match in which she had 16 kills, one air in the entire match. And the Illini sticking with it here. Within three. Yeah, side out percentage is really good right now for Illinois. They're taking good passes. Look at how they're just moving that ball to that right pin. No block. Barnes at the service line. Pedraza looking to Hannah, who has the hot hand right now. You got to note that Cameron Hannah. We saw previous to this shot, a line shot. This shot, hard cross court. So showing how versatile she is, that's what makes her hard to defend. Set point for Penn State on the road. 
Burbage with the overpass. A fantastic swing by Burbage. Well, Kennedy Collins for Illinois is in the middle, and she was getting a ton of sets. This time, Mosier goes to the right side, and that's what's creating space along the net for hitters to score. Pedraza awkwardly and too long as Merzek. And it's going to be a point to the Illini. They're within two. Illinois serving super tough right now. Grimes able to handle it, but boy, this ball is dropping as soon as it crosses the net. Hershen right there looking to Merzik once more, and Pan keeps it up. But it will be a point to Penn State, and they take set number one. But it was hard block and just knows what's open and where to hit it. And that's what you get with an experienced transfer, which Coach Schumacher calling has not obviously shied away from. Grimes looking to Hannah, and she's picking up right where she left off for set uh, point number one in set two. Yeah, and that ball was just popped up high, not in a perfect zone to hit. And what she does exceptionally well with that ball is get her feet to the ball, make sure it's over her right shoulder, and she's got any shot that time slamming it down the line. Mosier behind her head to Burbage, who successfully goes off the block. Both setters putting their hitters in great opportunities. We're seeing middles on both sides of the net struggling to close the block, which really helps outside hitters. If you see some area, you're going to go swing for it. Burbage, I think, on that one, was able to get a touch off the block. That certainly did help. It's interesting for this Penn State team that is fifth in the country in blocks per set. Held only three against Northwestern, so trying to find that groove back to his Merzik. Places it perfectly, and the flex comes from Pedraza. And in that serve receive, they were serving Merz, uh, Jess Merzik, and Mac Pedraza went to her middle. We did not see Mac Pedraza go to her middle very much in the first set, so we'll see if she works that in a little bit to hold that middle blocker. Mosier going to Burbage, and she just snaps it down the line, but a point to Penn State. It'll be Grimes back to serve. Target Terry and whipping that down is Collins, but that's also going to go out of play. The ball was set a little low for Collins. She really didn't have very many angles to hit at, so I think she needs to be stretched out a little bit in order to be successful. Grimes targeting Terry once more. She goes over and across the tape. Hannah is stuffed. What a stop by the Illini. Such strong shoulders on Kennedy Collins. Just sealing that net. And we talked about taking up space and going wide. Perfectly lined up there. And boy, she really did show her force at the net with that block. Coming off a match in which she had a career high nine blocks in five sets against Michigan State. You just can tell the kind of hot streak she's on, the confidence that she's playing with now as a grad student. Pedraza to Hannah, that is sent back as well, but off the hands, and Penn State picking up a point. Just Merzik handle, handling the serve receive so well. You know, teams are going to serve her. They're going to try to just put a lot of pressure on her in every position. So if you target a player like Merzik on serve receive, chances are she's going to be moved back and not able to swing at the ball. Harry denied there. Holland as well. Merzik tipping it over to Pam. Urzik unloading, but too long. Nunji checking in for the freshman, Lily Berry. She brought some good energy at the end of that first set as Penn State leads 5-3. And Terry gets the ace. 
Perry takes a lot of pride in her service game. She goes back. She's super focused. She gives herself a moment and then is just hitting that target so well. She's top 10 in program history yeah. in aces too, which is why they didn't expect her struggles to last long to start the year. Maybe just pressing a little bit, trying to score points for this team. Merzik on the readjustment there is Pan and the second contact not there as Penn State gets the point. I love the coverage. That's always a small part of the game that sometimes gets overlooked. And when you're a hitter and you've got people down low ready to cover, you can swing with confidence knowing that if it does get blocked, we can recycle that, that ball and try and get another point. We can maybe be more aggressive, take more risks. Mosier looking to Nunji. Flipping it over is Mosier looking for a kill. Markley tooling it off the block. Not only talented, but brings so much positive energy to the court. It's a great shot. We always talk about it. Go high off the blocker's hands and whack it outside so it is impossible to play once it hits that antenna, it's out of bounds. Overpass played by the Nittany Lions. Off the slide, it is Holland. And then they take care of business. But it is going to be a violation and a point to the Alina. Yeah, they're calling Allie Holland in the net. It was a tremendous slide attack, and then it started getting a little ugly. Let's take a look. There's a slide attack. Then it started getting a little sloppy. And there you see Allie Holland in the net. Seven to five is the Penn State lead. Harkley, she is stuck. Kari Bohm saying no. Big time block for Illinois. That'll get the juices going, but this ball was set inside, and Markley that time was going low seam and uh, just got it sent back right to her. Bohm red-shirted last year, now a big part of this lineup for the Illini. Harry just has to get it over. Off the slide once more, and Holland has that picked up. They go to Holland on the slide again, and Grimes says, I got it. Back once more, and off the block again is Markley to end a long rally. What did that rally prove to Penn State's coaching staff that this team has grit? that they have fight, and on the other side, the defensive plays that Illinois was making, it was outstanding. They just got used on that block, but on both sides of the net, if you're a coaching staff, you've got to be pleased with the effort and just sticking with the ball. Barkley, just a sophomore, plays with so much poise and confidence, wants the big moments. And Penn State striking again. So if you're Illinois, you don't want one play like this to bleed and cause Penn State to get on a roll. You want a side out right away. It's really the mark of a very skilled team. If you can get a side out here, you're in good shape. First swing of the game for Taylor Trammell. You talked about how they have not used the middle heavily. Pedraza looks to the pin again. It is Markley. Perfectly placed by Nunji. Playing with so much energy right now. And this team knows where is the quote-unquote weakest defender. Allie Holland make it, made a tremendous tough dig. But this one that goes right over top of the block, I mean, she's a big kid. And so she did her best effort to run that ball down. But really smartly placed ball right over top of the block in an area of Penn State's court that was somewhat susceptible. Four kills hitting a 250 is Merzeg attempting the back row blast and how about Bohm once more denying it. <laughs> yeah, you know, great vision because you got to know when Merzeg is in the back court that she is going to get a lot of swings. She takes so many more swings than anybody else on Penn State's team. And so 
they're just disciplined. They're waiting for the ball to get set, and they move very quickly to the point of attack. Dungy in on that stop as well. As that goes off the tape and down, just like you practice it, a perfect <laughs> ace. Something about being good and something about being lucky, right? That was a lucky one. Brick Mosier, she'll take it. Absolutely. Tying this up at nine in set number two. Going to Merzek again. Up the middle, Trammell, no stopping that kind of power. I love how Mac Pedraza is mixing it in. So, ball goes to Trammell, and she is able to go over top of the block, hit with such force. It's good when your middles are getting involved in either serve, receive, or transition. It takes a good pass in order to do that. Pedraza to serve, targeting Terry. Here's Nunji trying to rip it down the line, but that out of bounds. Out of system for the Illini. Pedraza to Trammell again, and what a beauty. Yeah. You know, after the first set, I thought, boy, this Penn State team really hasn't utilized their middles very much, and now we're seeing the middles starting to come alive. Holland was getting a ton of slides that time. Trammell in the middle delivers another one for her team. Trammell two kills on three swings. Out of system once more for Burbage, who almost gets it to drop. Big dig by Merzik. And then the off speed, no one there. Point to Penn State. Timeout is called with Penn State extending its lead now to four, 13 to nine. They took set number one. But lately, the hot hand has been the middle blocker, Taylor Trammell. Two kills on three attempts. So much power. The ball coming off her hands. Big here. Number 15, Penn State opening up a 13-9 lead. And Audrey, it's been methodical. They've been dealing with long rallies. Great effort from the Illini. But it's been them able to terminate and get those points. Yeah, and I think the difference is uh, Illinois' side-out percentage, 38%, which um, is, is allowing Penn State to, to get some points when they're serving. So uh, we'll see how they come out of this one. The Illini hitting minus 125 in this set. It's been a struggle to get those kills. Harry goes after it. It's off the bump set, it's Burbage. Hannah. Looks to be that knockout punch, not that time. And off the block, the Illini badly needed that point. Well, when you need a great defensive play, usually your, bear, your libero comes up for, big for you, and that was Barnes in the backcourt for Illinois, making a gutsy save to keep that ball off the floor, and then the transition swing by Illinois. Burbage with five kills, that ties Terry for a team high right now, and that's exactly what they're looking for, that offensive support to put the ball down. Speaking of, Trammell has been doing just that in set number two. And Mac Pedraza has a lot of confidence. When a middle hitter makes themselves available, stays off the net just enough so you have a window of opportunity to pump the ball in, it's a good feeling when your middle goes up like that and you can pump her the ball. We know Mac Pedraza likes to spread the love around. Did she see something in particular that made her think in this set, I'm going to go to my middles more or just the right timing? Well, I think what happens is if you don't force middle, then the blockers just lose respect and they just go to the outside. So I think in great opportunities like that, when you have the option to set, even if you're off the net a little bit, you've got to force middle, especially if you haven't set middle a lot in the previous set. That last play, a ball handling error by Raina Terry. Burbage trying to go over the block rate, saved by Merzik, but Maddie Villanova can't quite get underneath it. 
That's one of those sloppy points where, you know, it's a little discombobulated on your side of the net. Penn State not able to just scrap and get that ball off the ground. So a little easy point there, I would say, for the Illini. 15 to 11 is the Penn State lead after taking set number one. It's Barnes back to serve. Cross-court serve and Merzik crushes it. It's a beauty of a set. Mac Pedraza was all the way on the left side, right side sideline. Delivers that ball. Look at the tempo location on that long set. Merzik, what a great target to go to. I think what she was saying was Mac, great set. Did you see her face on that one? It was sweet. <laughs> and she enjoys having that passer on her team now for the first time in her career, the transfer from Michigan, her home state. Let's see if we see a touch. They're not uh, reviewing it, so I think Allie Holland came down and said, yeah, I, I, I got it. 16 to 12, the Nittany Lion lead. Bozier tries to push it over. Pedraza, my goodness. <laughs> what a pass and what a kill. Well, that just builds a team's confidence. When your setter pulls out stuff like that, you got to love it. So she wasn't quite there. Just put her hand under the ball. Let's take a look at it again. Good defensive get. Mack is playing in the back court, so she's got to hustle to the net and just gets her hand under the ball. <laughs> Nicely done. The Big Ten setter of the year can still surprise you. Off the slide, it is Collins off the fingertips. Collins going up so strong again, and I love the communication. She's calling for the set. Take a look at this dig by Penn State. Right there down the line, that was impressive. But then it's Collins on the slide. Harry at the service line. Here's Merzik absolutely unloading. <laughs> Mac Pedraza, I love it. She put a, a fake crown on Jess Merzik's <laughs> head like you are the queen. Take a look at this swing. This is big time. This is an international type of swing. This is an Olympian kind of swing. So uh, this kid's got a bright future beyond uh, collegiate volleyball. Perry just perfectly tips it over. So how do you defend that? Well, you really have to look at the hitter's hand. Sometimes you get caught up watching the ball. When you see that hand, that elbow drop, you have to release. And you just got to really have that focus. Look at the hitter's hand. That hand comes down. Take off from your defensive spot. Draws up the middle, and Holland takes care of it. Well, this connection between Holland and Pedraza is really, really gotten better. There were times when Ali Holland was feeling a little bit of frustration because that she just wasn't connecting very well. Well, that's uh, <laughs> those days are gone because it looks like she is in rhythm with the setter tonight. And yeah, she came into the season feeling like I can help this team. I want to score. And Pedraza was very unselfish, even though her history with Jess goes back several years. She's still going to spread the ball around. And in the middle has been working so well in this set because of Pedraza finding those locations. Rhymes, nice pass, but sent back in his boom. No surprise, in on the play again. Yeah, she's really good at just seeing what's going on and doesn't really jump or lean one way or the other. So, boom, reading the play and uh, it's getting big at the net. Illinois now within three. Been close in both sets. Trammell has that projected, and then Boom finishes. Well, you can see here that Pedraza is really trying to force middle to open things up for the outside. So when you're off the net, typically the 
middles will release and think, oh, that setter's going to set the pin. Uh, Bone knew. <laughs> she just stayed home. Two kills for Bohm, incredibly active at the net. All out effort from Terry. Barkley taking the speed off to perfection. You know, that's a difficult set to maneuver when that ball is coming behind you. So the five and five set, the out of system set was coming from behind. She does a good job of getting her feet to the ball and putting it right over the blocker's hands. And you can see just the excitement that uh, Grimes had for her hitter, just cheering her on after that tip scored. Pedraza serving, targeting Terry. And taking care of it is Hannah on the overpass there. Timeout called by Illinois with Penn State again inching closer to set point, 21-17. This is what happened in set number one where Penn State was at the end able to create that distance and take care of what they needed to. Yeah, and so if you're Illinois right now, you've got to get a better pass off of this serve receive and you've got to be able to run some different things. Look for Terry to get this set here because that is their go-to. Uh, but you have to be able to also create opportunities for your block and backcourt defense uh, to transition and get a point. So you certainly want to put up a good pass, try to run something in system. If you don't have the kill, try to take somebody out on Penn State's side of the net and trust that your defense will help you get a point. You mentioned Terry. It's been challenging. She's hitting zero so far, six kills on 23 swings, and clearly they're making it difficult for her. Yeah, putting a lot of pressure on her for sure. Welcome into Huff Hall in Champaign to everyone who is watching that five set thriller between number two Nebraska and number 17 Purdue. What a battle that Nebraska survives and this young team with their talented freshman core goes into a hostile environment, takes some hits from the Boilermakers. What a huge victory. Here in Champaign in set number two, Penn State took the first one, 25 to 22, but very closely contested. But it has been Penn State in set number one and here late in set number two that they've been able to pour on the points and go on a solid run of play. Big kill by Nunji. She was the energy maker, bringing her exuberance at the end of set one and looking to do that here again. Yeah, Illinois needed that point. That side out was huge. So a great pass allows the setter to just dish out the ball wherever she wants. Nunji coming through with a big swing going against only one block in front of her. And State looking to go to 3-0 in Big Ten plays. That goes off the tape, and look at Trammell right there to read it. And then Hannah sends it to the floor. That's a great heads-up play by Penn State. You know, just being able to play and score on things that you don't practice. People don't practice this play here. High bump set. And then you just got to have confidence as an outside hitter. See ball, hit ball, score. And that's what Cameron Hanna has done all night long for the Nittany Lions. The middle boom. And a big point for the Illini. This happened in set one two, Audrey, where they continue to threaten late. Yeah, they're here to compete. And, and you, you got to like the fight that you're seeing from this Illinois team. You know, they had a little bit of a gap in the second set where they were falling behind, just not playing defense very well. But Merzik absolutely rips it. Yeah, there's really not a defense to stop that. When that ball goes right on the line perimeter, it's it's so tough. And then, you know, you, you're trying to take shots away, but then she can see what you're taking away, and she finds a way to score. Seven kills for Merzik, hitting 100 so far. And there's the Penn State block. Holland with the finger wag. <laughs> They play with swagger. She plays with a ton of confidence. Allie Holland really takes pride in her defensive part of the game. So she's there. She reaches over. 
And she's like, yep, not tonight. Sixth in the Big Ten in blocks per set to look for Burbage, who tools it off the block. Burbage with a little bit of a chit chat after she swung at that ball and got the kill. She looks at the block and just has a few words for them. So, gotta love this competitive spirit that you're seeing on both sides of the net. It is set point number two for Penn State, but to your point, Audrey, a significant solid early Big Ten test for both of these teams. Pedraza. Villanovic with the bump set to Merzek. What a big dig by Barnes to keep it alive. Pedraza up the middle. It is Holland. And from her knees, it's Barnes with the second contact. And Hannah unleashes the heat once more. And it is a 2 nothing lead here at Huff Hall. Penn State. Off Hall, it is an orange out. It's been loud. And they're looking for their fighting Illini to pick up a set victory. Merzek, too long there, and striking first is the Illini. Mac Pedraza right now for Penn State is in the backcourt. She's got three hitters, all capable in the front court, and we'll see who she goes to with this serve receive pattern. Dungey at the service line. Back behind her, Hannah goes over the block. Great effort by Barnes, but just exquisitely placed by Hannah. Yeah, I love that word, exquisitely placed. And you are absolutely right. Barnes going hard after the ball, but any ball that goes into the net is really tough on that second contact. So sometimes it's not just getting under the ball, it's the quality of the contact that's important. The Clemson tra transfer two-time all-second team ACC as the Illini striking back to take a 2-1 lead. Coach Thomas has got to be pleased that the middle is getting involved in the offense. 6-4 Bohm comes in big with a quick attack out of the middle. How about four kills on six swings for her? Big presence at the net. It's Hannah just is going to miss wide. A couple hitting errors from Penn State has given easy points to Illinois. That time Hannah was going for that line shot and hit it wide. They go to Merzik. She passes, then attacks. Pedraza is going to keep going to Hannah, and the stop made by the Illini, Collins and Terry. Well, this is where you have to be it, it, extremely precise. You're going to see this ball that's tracking tight to the net, and when it comes from that angle, it really, the advantage goes to the block. So you're going to see that there weren't many options for Cameron Hannah to go as she's swinging through that ball. Upon replay, that really was a solo block by Terry, too. Incredible work. And that is also going to land outside the line. Yeah, but Illinois in the net on that, so just a missed opportunity for a point for um, Illinois on that swing. So this will be Cassie Kirschen back to serve. Up the middle is Collins. Well done by Mosier and the so named grandma uh, of the right. team in Collins. Yeah, take a look at this pass that goes. It's a tough serve. Barnes handles it with ease, and then you can see the angle that Collins hits the ball. She's going way past the block. That left side area of the court open, executes it wonderfully. Five kills coming off a 19 kill match, and just magical from Matt Pedraza. Well, what I like about the way she attacks the ball is it's disguised. She's got her contact point nice and high. Take a look. And then with her back doesn't see the block, but somehow just has the instincts to know where to place it. There's crafty, and there's what we've seen her do today, which is just feels completely made up out of the Mac Pedraza handbook. Pedraza behind her head. Finds Holland successfully for the kill. 
Ali Holland running that slide on transition. It's always nice when you have that hitter that has the confidence to go behind the setter. And she hit a tough cross-court shot, but really defensively, Illinois has got to be able to handle that ball that comes right into your lap. Berzik. Back to play it is Pan and a free ball here for the Nittany Lions. Off the slide once more. Collins terminates up the middle. The key to Illinois winning that point was getting a controlled block off of Allie Holland's slide for Penn State. You control the ball, slow it down, you're able to transition, get a good swing, and that's exactly what Illinois did. Ran mid middle off a nicely placed ball right into the setter's hands. Berzik, nice pass. Pushed over by Mosier. Barnes clearing everyone out. The bump set to Nunji. The back row, it is Terry. And denied at the net. Another long rally goes to Penn State. Yeah, you have to have patience. You have to have competitive composure, and we saw it on both sides of the net. Great defensive plays, extending the rally, but it's Allie Holland just taking care of that overpass. Allie Holland, first team all Big Ten last season. Back to serve, some miscommunication from the Illini on their serve receipt. Yeah, Barnes definitely wants to take the balls. She wants people to clear out and give her space. A little miscommunication there between her and Vanessa Pan. Time picked up by Pan. Nunji has that sent back. One more look for Nunji. And look at the teaming up of Pedraza and Trammell to send it back. Yeah, the point was really set up by a tough serve. You see right there, it's a five and five set. So the block that you're talking about is easily formed. There's no options. And these Penn State players are huge. And if you give them an opportunity to line up, get hip to hip, there's not a lot of space to hit around. That's certainly part of the formula for being <laughs> a good blocking team, which Penn State is number one in the Big Ten entering today as Collins rises and fires. Well, the speed of that set is so impressive. Collins is trusting her setter, Mosier, to put the ball. She goes up and she commits to jump, has her arm back, and just ready to swing. And again, if you are a setter, you've got to love when you see your middle doing that. You'll take a risk. You'll dish the ball to her. Pedraza up the middle, right back. Look at that dig by the middle and Collins. Markley goes off hands and Trammell says, they'll take care of this, does just that. Illinois right now doing all the right things. She mentioned Collins dig in that left back area of the court. The big girl going down, 6-3 digging the ball. And all that effort just didn't pay off for them as the ball control was not there when the ball's hugging right on top of the net. Penn State takes advantage and scores. I know this coaching staff that was still applauding that effort on the dig. Her digs per set about double her previous career high. Coach Thomas joked, you know, I'll put her in a jersey, <laughs> but we also need her at middle. You can see how she's extended her game too here as a grad, a grad student. That, by the way, a ball handling error by Caroline Barnes. Yeah, you're starting to see passing break down in the last couple points for Illinois. It's been kind of spotty at times, and we're seeing how it's been uh, a pressure situation for them to try to get that ball up to the setter. Pedraza behind her head, and it is Hannah with the termination. We've seen Hannah so many times just take the ball and do something smart with it. So that time, not going for a straight down shot, going off the blocker's hands again. Mac Pedraza, she has so many weapons. It's it's so much easier when you have confidence in three hitters along the net. She's in the back court, so all three are there for her. Hannah hitting 474, 12 kills leads everyone. That time though, 
She says it too, sends it too long. Tomorrow's stream women's volleyball live on Big Ten Plus when the Illini are back on the floor here at Huff Hall for a matchup with Iowa. There's no plus like home. Download Big Ten Plus and subscribe today. Taking on an Iowa team that the first Big Ten match of the season sent to Minnesota to five sets. So that should be interesting to catch up on tomorrow. But that swing, Markley was on the right side of the court. Again, it's this versatility of the Penn State hitters. Typically, Markley is that left side attacker on that service pattern. She feels comfortable, and that opens up so many opportunities for Mac to spread that ball around. Bilinovic gets it over from the line. And Burbage sends it too long, giving the point to Penn State. It's 12 to 8. A timeout called by Illinois, trying to keep this match alive. They trail two sets to nothing against the number 15 ranked team in the country, looking for a comeback on their home court. You don't need credit. Illinois looking to make a run here in set three against the number 15 ranked team in the country in Penn State. Tomorrow, you do not want to miss Saturday night volleyball, a doubleheader. First, it's number two Nebraska facing an upstart Indiana team, followed by a top 25 showdown between the Nittany Lions and the Gophers. Saturday night volleyball powered by Unleaded 88, only on the Big Ten Network and the Fox Sports app. And Nebraska today, of course, coming up with a huge five-set victory over number 17, Purdue. That freshman team, led team, in a hostile environment in a huge victory to remain undefeated. Hannah there down the line, just goes outside the line. And when we caught, talked to um, head coach Chris Thomas, he said, you know, we really need to to contain as best we can Jess Merzik, and we're, it's going to be a tough, tough task. But they have done that. She's on eight kills, six errors. She's hitting 077. The problem is, is everybody else for Penn State has elevated their level of play. Uh, Taylor Tremel hitting 250. Alexa Merkley with eight kills. So this is where that balanced attack for Penn State can pay off when you try to focus your defense on one player. It's nice when you've got other people that can come in and score big, and that's what Penn State has right now. You've got multiple people hitting above 230 right now. An example of what you're talking about there on the other side with that attack air by Terry. They've made it tough on her today. Merzik off the hands and it hits the floor. Yeah, just Merzik's just feeling it. I mean, she goes up with so much confidence. And, you know, th these people, when they're playing, they're not looking at their numbers or their stats or anything like that. She's just going hard. And what she doesn't do in the front court if she gets blocked or if she's got to do a roll shot, she makes up in the back court and on serve receive. She just carries such a load for this team as a stable six rotation player. We were actually talking about at serve receive today. Of course, we knew we were seeing some of the top outsides in the conference in Terry and in Merzik, but we also thought they're some of the best in serve receive as well. When we're looking at true six rotation players that really do everything, as Merzik then picks up the serve. Chased down by Barnes. Great effort, and Terry just gets it over. Stopped by Terry. Her team loves to celebrate these big stuff blocks that she delivers. Take a look at this. Ball slightly under set here. Not much room for Cameron Ham Hannah to go around. You can see that that ball probably didn't even clear the plane of the net. I mean, one on one there, coming out on top. There can't be a whole lot of better feelings. As Penn State will take another point, 15 to 11. Hershen back to serve, the defensive specialist for Penn State. That just lands a little too long. So for Penn State on side out offense here, 
Mako draws us front row when she has two front row players, and Penn State has decided to go with three DSs in the backcourt. They have a lot of depth there. It draws over her head again. How does she do it? She's gutsy. I, I mean, she just she just knows, hey, you know what? I'm just going to move the ball around. She knows where the defensive players are. As long as she puts it out of their reach, she knows that there's not going to be a great offensive play coming at um, at the at Penn State's defense. So she just moves the ball around and and watches the defense on the other side of the team struggle. On the overpass, off of Collins, and it will be a point to Penn State. They lead by five now here in set number three, looking to close the door on the tough Illini. Timeout called by Illinois, trailing by five. They need to win this set to keep this match alive here at home, but it is Penn State in command as they have been throughout this match, 17 to 12. Number 15, Penn State leading here in set number three, 17 to 12, looking for a straight set victory on the road to go 3-0 and in Big Ten play. Big Ten Plus delivers thousands of non-televised live events, access to next day on-demand replays, multi-view to watch up to four games at once, and a 24-7 channel for your favorite school. There's no plus like home. Subscribe and stream for as low as $9.95 a month at Big10Plus.com. Illinois looking to make a run here. In set number three is Mosier to run after that ball. The draws of the slide. Holland has it tapped back. Collins unloading, but it's kept up by Penn State. And then the back row, looking great for Markley, finding that location. Jillian Grimes, the libero for Penn State, coming up big with a hard dig there. And then take a look at this big time swing right in between the two defenders, the backcourt, just kissing that end line. It's going to go to the Illini with that service air. The Illini, though, have been able to pick up those points from airs, from the service line, and from attacking, but hitting just 048 in this third set. Pedraza, back row blast from Merzik. Draws a feeding Merzik again, but the point will go to the Illini. And Penn State looking over at their bench. Yeah, the call was a double contact on the set, so right away Illinois' coaching staff came up and was shouting, demanding a double on that set from Pedraza. And uh, Schumacher Colley just kind of went like, what, what are you talking about? So different opinion there. Holland's off the slide and the denial by Holland and Markley. That was a nasty block. That ball hit the ground before either the blocker or the hitter's feet landed. Take a look at this. That is down and then the feet come down. That is incredible. Big time, Big Ten volleyball right there. That was vicious. Collins has been so strong today. Seven kills, hitting two 11. They go to it once more, and there she splits the block, reading it perfectly. Well, it's the confidence that you have in your hitter, and right now Mosier has a ton of confidence in Collins. Look at this ball that's placed perfectly and she rips it right in the seam of the block. And also maybe when you're on that receiving end of a, a vicious block, you want to go back oh, to that player too. Absolutely, give me the ball, I'm sure is what Collins told her. 
up the middle. It's Trammell, almost dug by Collins, and set a point to Penn State as they get up to 20. It is Pedraza back to serve. 29 assists, eight digs today, and that lands just on the wrong side of the net for Penn State to the point going uh, to the Illini. Then Brooke Mosier back, just like Pedraza, a brand new setter on this team, was recruited at that position, played outside and opposite last year. You see those connections still building, going off the block. The Nittany Lions have got 21. And for Penn State, Maddie Bilinovic, she's going to go back to serve. Penn State really wants her to be aggressive from that service line and talk. Dig around a well-formed block. That's her job. Goes to Terry. And off speed is sent back by Trammell. Draws it to Merzik, and what a rip. Yeah, that's a high point of contact. That's thumb down at the point of contact, and that is the sharp cross-court shot. Merzik just does an exceptional job of seeing the block and ripping it into the hole in the cross-court area of the court. Mosier goes to Burbage, and there's no returning that. The block emphatic on that play. Yeah, with marginal passes, again, the advantage goes to the blocking team. So Illinois really competing hard, but it's the quality of that first contact that just isn't there at this point in the third set. Nine blocks for Penn State. Novick, the bump set to Merzik, and she is de denied. It is Bohm who's been all over it. Well, this is a smart play by Illinois. The quality of the set was not there, so the ball was just tipped over, and they relied on blocking backcourt defense, the block especially there, to just get the point for them. Actually, you know, it was a well-read play again by Bohm. She's been doing it all night long as a middle blocker. Five blocks for Bohm. Barnes setting up Terry. And Hannah has it stuffed right back. Terry and Bohm with a whole lot to say. This is what Illinois has done in all night long in the first sets, first, first two sets. They have been down and then they kind of find another gear and they just start relying on their block. They get emotional, they get involved. And then point after point, they just, you know, they start getting some easy points. So it's so much fun to watch them play, but can they steady it out here, put a tough serve in and transition and score on this play? Raina Terry told us at pass and serve today, this team is ready to fight. Pick seventh in the Big Ten, four straight seventh place finishes. They feel like they can be in that upper echelon and they continue to threaten, forcing Penn State to call a timeout. Penn State leading 23-19. Number 15 trying to do away with the Illini in straight sets, but Illinois not going away anytime soon here at home, looking to force set four. If you put the ball in my hands. Number 15, Penn State leading 23 to nine, looking for a straight set victory on the road. Get all the post-match reaction, plus news and highlights on the big show. That's coming up next on the Big Ten Network and the Fox Sports app, and a whole lot to go over as we head into yet another weekend of Big Ten Volleyball. If you missed that earlier game, number two, Nebraska, the five-set victory over Purdue on the road. This one as well, a whole lot to talk about, especially as we head into the weekend tomorrow here on BTN. You'll see as well Penn State taking on Minnesota, a top 15 match. A lot to look forward to and get set up for.
Nunji at the service line. Pedraza pulled off the net, and Merzek hits the antenna and a point to the Illini within three now. Illini knows who they want to serve the ball to. Put some pressure on Jess Merzik to make two good plays there. That time the pass took Mac Pedraza off. Ball hit the antenna, so Illinois just hanging around here. Like they've done each and every set. Trammel up the middle, a beautiful dig. Barnes gets it over a free ball to the Nittany Lions. Up the middle, Trammel hits it off of Bohm. And it will be match point. It's a big swing by Taylor Trammell. The block for Illinois was there, but just that quick explosiveness of Trammell being up in the air when the setter is touching the ball was the advantage to her scoring there. Burbage denied, and Penn State takes one on the road, known for their blocking ending appropriately. Berzik just going one on one. Yeah, I see. 